you're considering premium lens replacement, also known as refractive lens exchange, or you know that you need cataract surgery, and you know that you would like to be able to see near, mid, and far without having to rely on bifocals, progressives, or reading glasses after your surgery, then I'd encourage you to watch this video to learn what the best lenses are in 2024 to help you see your best without glasses. First, briefly, let's explain the problem. There are two focusing structures inside our eyes that help us see the world around us, the cornea and the lens. Together, they focus an image on the retina inside our eyes. When we're young, our lenses are clear and flexible, allowing us to focus near and far easily. As we age, our lenses lose flexibility and they become cloudy, ultimately leading to cataract formation. This aging process will affect 100% of the population, causing us to need reading glasses or bifocals sometime after the age of 45 and need or want cataract surgery sometime between age 60 and 80. No one outruns father time. So if you're between the ages of 45 and 60 and have to rely on bifocals, progressives, or reading glasses to see near, mid, and far, and you want to improve your vision and regain function and the ability to see at all distance without having to rely on bifocals or reading glasses, then premium lens replacement, where we remove the aging lens and replace it with a man-made lens implant is a safe, proven, and effective option that we have been doing for the past 30 years. We use these same premium lens implants for patients who have visually significant cataracts who want to see their best as well. So let's say you're in discussions with your ophthalmologist about choosing the best lens that's going to help you see at all distances, far, mid, and near, without glasses, so you're trying to get the best range of vision and you're trying to get the best quality of vision day and night, what are the best lenses available in 2024? There are three categories of premium lenses that we work with. Multifocal lenses, extended depth of focus lenses, and the light adjustable lens. First, let's talk about multifocal lens implants. The multifocal or trifocal lens that we've had the most experience with is the panoptics lens. We've used thousands of these lenses over the past five years. The panoptics lens works well for the vast majority of patients and most patients can read their cell phone, their computer, see to drive and watch TV without glasses. Do patients with the panoptics still need to use glasses? Some of the time. So for example, threading a needle or sewing or reading tiny print in low light those patients in those circumstances will still need to wear some reading glasses some of the time. But for most day-to-day -day activities, no glasses are needed. What's the most common side effect of the panoptics lens? Patients will see halos around lights at night due to the design of the lens, which has concentric rings. So you'll see a halo at night when you're driving around points of light, but you won't see halos around lights during the daytime. Recently, the Odyssey multifocal lens has become commercially available and we started using it for our patients in April of 2024. What's the purported advantage of the Odyssey over the panoptics? Because they're both designed similarly with these concentric rings. Johnson & Johnson states that the Odyssey lens gives slightly better image contrast than the panoptics. So patients might have slightly better quality of vision and may be able to see a little bit better up close in low light using the Odyssey over the panoptics. We've used both these lenses and in fact over the past month I placed the Odyssey lens in several patients who had their second eye surgery. Those patients had their first eye surgery corrected with the panoptics and when I asked them What's the difference between your vision, between your panoptics and your Odyssey lens? They seem to not be able to tell a perceptible difference. So the image quality between these two lenses thus far seems to be very similar. We'll let you know as we gain more experience using both of these lenses, which lens seems to be better or if they are indeed very, very comparable.
Both of these lenses, in our experience, are outstanding. Our patients have about a 98 to 99% patient satisfaction rate with these lenses. What happens to the one to 2% of patients who are not happy with these lenses? Why are they not happy? Well, the most common complaint is they will say, I have difficulty seeing at night because I see halos through the lens. And they're referring to the halo that's created by the concentric rings that have a benefit, which is these rings allow great range of vision, but that range comes at a price. There is a halo effect around lights seen at nighttime. That's why we've been pleasantly surprised by our early experience using this multifocal, the Clearview 3 lens. It's designed differently. It has a segmented bifocal design and seems to give the same range of vision as the panoptics, as the Odyssey, so patients can see near, mid, and far without glasses. But because the Clearview 3 does not have rings in the lens and is designed with a segmented bifocal, patients with a Clearview 3 don't seem to see as much of a halo at night. Their night vision seems to be cleaner than the night vision with a multifocal lens with concentric rings. So of the three multifocal lenses that we have available today, my new preferred lens is the Clearview 3. We advise patients who have the Clearview 3 that you'll see your phone, your computer, you'll see your TV, you'll see great to drive, and you'll see great at night as well, period. In fact, over the past month, we've had two patients who came to see us who were in that one to two percent of our patient population who was dissatisfied with their vision and they happen to have the panoptics lens. So we removed the panoptics lens and replaced it with the Clearview 3 lens and those patients were more satisfied. They seemed to see better overall image quality and their nighttime vision improved because they noticed they didn't have to deal with a halo around lights at night. Now, to be fair, we've only been using the Clearview 3 for a little over a month, but our early experience and our patients are telling us that they love their vision, they love their ability to see at all distances without glasses with the Clearview 3, and they seem to have better image quality and better nighttime vision than they experience with other multifocal lenses. So what's the catch? Why don't we use the Clearview 3 for everybody? Isn't it perfect? Well, there's no lens that's perfect. There are three reasons or three criteria that a patient has to fall within in order to qualify for being a candidate to receive the Clearview 3. Number one, their pupil size has to be 2.75 millimeters or larger. Number two, they need to have minimal astigmatism because the Clearview 3 does not come in an astigmatism correcting design. On the other hand, the panoptics and odyssey lenses do and will correct astigmatism. The third reason is that the Clearview 3 only comes in a certain limited power range. So how will you know if you're a good candidate for which lens? We always need to examine your eyes, take all the measurements of all the facets of your eye in order to find out which lens is going to give you your best result. Next, Let's talk about the two extended depth of focus lenses, the Symphony and the Vividi lenses. These two extended depth of focus lenses give great vision far and mid, but not near. The expectation with an extended depth of focus lens is that you'll be able to see without glasses far and mid. So for example, TV driving, desktop computer, dashboard of your car, but you'll still need reading glasses to see up close. The Vividi lens creates minimal nighttime halos due to its design. The Symphony lens, on the other hand, does produce a halo effect around lights at night. But in terms of quality of vision, I think the Symphony lens tends to give better overall image quality than the Vividi lens. The Symphony lens is actually my preferred lens for patients who have had radial keratotomy surgery. Finally, there's a third premium lens category, the Light Adjustable Lens, or LAL. This lens is formally classified as a monofocal lens, but it does have some extended depth of focus properties. The unique benefits of the Light Adjustable Lens are that it seems to provide the best image quality for patients who want superb long distance vision. 
The light adjustable lens does provide some extended depth of focus properties and recently the light adjustable lens plus was introduced and it's designed to give more range of focus than the original light adjustable lens. I've used both the LAL Plus and the original LAL for our patient. And can I tell you that this lens outperforms this lens in my experience and the feedback that I'm getting from our patients, they both seem to perform about the same. So if you receive the regular light adjustable lens or the LAL Plus, you're getting a great lens, but they seem to perform comparably. Both seem to give about the same far and mid-range vision. The most unique property of these lenses is adjustability. It's the only lens implant that after we place it into the eye, we can shine a light on the lens implant and fine tune the focus and customize it to what the patient wants. So if they want a little bit better mid-range vision, we can dial in a little better mid-range vision, but they'll lose a little far. And if they want better far vision, then we can dial almost perfect far vision without glasses. Patients with a light adjustable lens will still need glasses to see near most of the time based on our experience. So in conclusion, let me leave you with some important fundamental concepts. There's no perfect lens implant. Despite the great technology that we have, the best lens is the lens God gave you when you were 21 years old. And thus far, we have not cracked the code. The lens implants of today give great quality vision, but they give the vision of a normal sighted 39 to 40 year old person. So we generally place premium lenses into patients who are about age 45 and up. Those people who are that age range, 45 and up, have begun to notice that their lenses don't focus as easily as they used to. When when we look at their lenses through a microscope, their lenses are visibly more cloudy than the lenses of a 20 or 30 year old. And the older person gets, the less range of focus that they have because their lens continuously loses flexibility, loses range of focus, and their lens gets more and more cloudy. So the older a person gets, the more bothersome their vision becomes, the more reliant on glasses they become. And so if we can take a person who's 50 and make them see like they're 39 to 40, that's a super sweet and powerful value proposition to be able to regain a lost function when you're 50 and perform like you're 40, it's huge. And it's even more huge if you regain the function of a 40 year old when you're 60 or older. Another way of thinking about it is a saying, physics is a law and everything else is a recommendation. When we're using these lens implants, they are splitting light. That's not the way we were designed with our natural lenses. Our natural lenses refocus 100% of the light because the natural lens changes shape. These lenses do not change shape. So the range of vision and image quality will have some slight trade-offs and not perform quite as well as our natural lenses in our 20s. Despite the limitations of modern lens implants, their benefits, in my opinion, far outweigh any potential side effects. Remember, the natural human lens at age 40, 50, 60 and beyond has lost function and has lost clarity. So lens implants for that patient population outperform the natural lenses of people in that age range. And nobody loves the look or having to rely on glasses to see up close. Most people don't love relying on bifocals or progressives to read their watch or see their cell phone. And the ability to see at all distances near, mid and far without these glasses is in my opinion, a modern miracle. And it's the most commonly performed procedure in our practice. So in 2024, we now have the best lens implant technology that we've had in the past 30 years, which helps patients see at all distances near, mid and far without glasses while giving the best overall image quality. Hopefully this video gives you some useful information to help you choose the best implant that'll help you see your best for the rest of your life. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.